Thank you, Chair, and hello, everyone. So in a strange way, the impetus for this work I will be presenting actually started more than 25 years ago when my colleague, Professor Michael Schleyer, initiated long-term coral monitoring at Sedwana Bay. Since that time, we have been quantifying a gradual decline in the cover of soft coral that we have been battling to explain, and therefore thought we would investigate the potential. role of pollutants as a cause for the decline. South Africa has a range of coral kilometers with extreme recent to most western coast, occurring along about 120 kilometers of coastline. Importantly, they all lie within a marine protected area and a World Heritage Site, the Isimangalisa Wetland Park. They are marginal reefs occurring at high latitude and as a consequence are non-accretive, existing as fossilized sand dunes with a thin veneer of coral at depths of 8 to 27 meters. Although they are marginal high latitude reefs, they have high biodiversity with at least 90 species of hard coral and 40 species of soft coral, with soft corals being the dominant community component. This map shows the three main reef complexes. The long term monitor site in the soft complex adjacent to Nara June, you will all feature wetlands and monitoring countries detect and statistically significant decline in the cover of soft coral, which equates to about 1% per annum, from 54% in 1993 to 38% in 2014. Contrastingly, the opposite trend for hard corals has been measured, which have exhibited a gradual increase in cover from 13% up to 19%. We have been at odds to explain this pattern and the decline in soft coral cover. In general, the reefs appear healthy. Could the decline be due to global warming and or ocean acidification rather than climate change? Or what about hard coral pollution be responsible? All of the above that there have been no significant bleaching events in the area. There is no evidence of macroalgal abundance increasing, nor obvious signs of pollution when you consider that the reefs are far from any industry and there are no rivers in the region to act as conduits for pollutants. However, recent analyses by my co-author Professor Mark Humphreys detected high levels of DDT in the sediments of Lake Sabaya, which happens to lie adjacent to the monitoring site and is only separated from it by a narrow dune cordon. And so, could the decrease in soft coral cover be attributable to the chronic effects of DDT and perhaps other organochloride pesticides leaching from Lake Sabaya? Therefore, the study was quantify organochloride concentration of corals from the reef hypothesized that there was a contamination gradient southwards from Regal Reef opposite Lake Sabaya. This provides an overview of the field sampling, where triplicate 5 gram samples were collected from the soft coral Sonilera gravis and Sarcophytum glaucum, as well as the sponge Theonella swinaya on scuba, from five reefs spanning the central and southern reef complexes. In the laboratory, a modified quater solid phase extraction procedure was used in the extraction of 18 different organochloride pesticides at the University of the Vitt This is a table of the various analytes that were targeted. It included various types of ores, D and N levels in various types, chromatograph, coupled to a time of flight mass spectrometer, with comparisons against high quality reference standards before the pesticide concentrations were each expressed as nanograms per gram wet weight. In addition, natural abundance stable nitrogen isotope signatures were quantified in the soft coral Sinulea gravis from each site in order to investigate groundwater as a potential source of the contaminants. Data analysis involved running several three-factor permutational ANOVA models on the multivariate data and on each of the five groups of pesticide with distance from Lake Sabaya included as a covariate 
and sites and species considered fixed effects. The multivariate data were visualized using constrained non-metric multidimensional scaling ordinations. We also calculated several parent to metabolite ratios to get an idea of the relative chronology of the contaminant inputs. This was done for DDT, Endrin, Heptachlor, and HCH. Lastly, we calculated the ratio of DDD to DDE to provide an indication of whether the DDT in corals had degraded via an aerobic or anaerobic process before it was assimilated. The latter would indicate that the DDT was likely moving through the coastal sand dunes by groundwater into the marine environment. Moving on to the results now, and the graph shows you the average pesticide concentration at each of the five sites and a breakdown of the five groups of pollutants comprising the overall pesticide loadings. What we see is that there are very, very high levels of reef at about one nanogram tissue and a general deviation as you say from regal lakes with the exception of red sands, which bucks this trend. Interestingly, red sands happens to lie adjacent to a large coastal wetland, the Makuzi swamps. Furthermore, all five groups of pesticide are present at each site, including DDT. This figure shows the results of a constrained MDS ordination of pesticide concentrations versus distance from the hypothesized pollutant source opposite Regal Reef, according to each site. Again, samples are closest to the hypothesized pollutant source share more similarity than those further away. Interestingly, although red sands had similarly high levels of pesticide to Regal Reef, the ordination has shifted the samples to negative values and in the opposite direction to samples from Regal Reef. This is the same technique used in the previous slide, but showing the samples constrained according to each of the five sites. One can see how the two sites with the highest levels of pesticide, Regal Reef and Red Sands, are distinct from each other, but also differ from the three sites with relatively lower pesticide concentrations. This is largely due to the concentrations of different H stages and deletion products. If we look at the pollutant patterns among the three species of coral reef organism we sampled. On average, the soft coral Sinialera gravis had the highest concentrations of pesticide, whereas the other soft coral and sponge had similar concentrations. The highest pesticide concentrations recorded in any sample was 3,000 nanograms per gram of tissue in Sinulera gravis, whilst the lowest was recorded in the sponge Theonella swinia at 450 nanograms per gram. Also worth noting is that all five types of pollutants are being bioaccumulated in all, all three of the organisms we investigated. This consternation shows clear from the higher concentrations of a variety of pesticides, especially endosulfins and mesoxychlor. There is also some separation between Sarcophytum glaucum and Theonella swinii due to the differential concentration of dildrin. The multivariate analysis of covariance of all 18 pesticide analytes with distance from Regal Reef, opposite Lake Sabaya, the hypothesized source of the pollutants fitted as a covariate, detected significant differences according to distance from Regal Reef site, species, as well as the interaction of distance with species and sites groups sized individually as univariate models, distance from regal reef, sites and species were all found to show significant variation in pesticide concentrations. 
We also looked at pesticide pairing to metabolite ratios in the organisms we sampled. The total DDT to DDD and DDE ratio was calculated as being less than one for all five sites and for all three species, indicated here in brackets above each of the bars. This was evidence of recent inputs of DDT into the marine environment. We did a similar exercise for HCH, Heptachlor and Dieldrin, and depending on the pollutant, found evidence of both new and historic inputs based on their parent to metabolite ratios. Lastly, segregated between the and the idea here being that relatively enriched nitrogen isotope signatures may indicate influence from terrestrial sources of nitrogen, such as from groundwater, as marine sources of nitrogen are generally depleted relative to land-based sources, which are enriched. Both Regal Reef and Red Sands had the most enriched nitrogen isotope signatures, and you will recall that both these sites had the highest concentrations of pesticide 2 and also happened to lie adjacent to large coastal wetlands. We correlated the pesticide concentration with the nitrogen signature. And although we found a positive relationship, it was not statistically significant. Probably big factors are just carriage of each that normal simulation indicates. Nevertheless, when we calculated the DDE to DDD ratio, we derived values consistently greater than one, which is an indication that the DDT being assimilated by coral reef organisms had been broken down by an anaerobic process, such as would happen if the DDT was being delivered to the reef by groundwater flow through the coastal dunes. In conclusion, High levels of all 18 pesticide analytes were detected at all sites and in all species. There was a significant declining trend in pesticide concentration from Regal Reef opposite Lake Sabaya, but also concentration spiked at Red Sands. Depending on the pesticide, recent and historical inputs are likely. Highest concentrations of pesticides were detected adjacent to coastal lakes and wetlands. A possible groundwater transport mechanism is likely to be delivering these pollutants into the sea based on nitrogen isotope signatures and DDE to DDD ratios, indicating degradation of DDT by anaerobic processes such as would occur if it were moving through coastal dunes. Going forward, we have now expanded the study spatially and to include other coral reef organisms. And we'll be looking at a bigger variety of pollutants too. The question still remains, however, whether these pollutants are having a negative effect on the reefs of this important World Heritage Site proclaimed for its biodiversity. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the following institutions and organizations for their support. And thank you all very much for watching. Thank you.